North Korean leader Kim Jong-un has scrapped the bedrock goal of reconciling and reuniting with South Korea. Instead, he's presenting the North and the South as two independent states who are at war with each other. We believe that like his grandfather in 1950, Kim Jong-un has made a strategic decision to go to war. Those were the words of Robert L. Carlin, a former CIA analyst, and Siegfried S. Hecker, a nuclear scientist who's visited North Korea several times. This was part of an article that they wrote on the specialist North Korea site 38 North. Such a pronouncement set off alarm bells both in Washington and in Seoul. But most analysts disagree with this war theory. The British broadcaster, the BBC, spoke to several experts across Asia, Europe and North America and none of them agreed with the proposition that Kim was getting ready for war. Risking his entire regime on a potentially cataclysmic conflict is what the North Koreans are known for. They have proven to be ruthlessly Machiavellian right from the time of the founder of the country, Kim Il-sung, who is the current Kim's grandfather. The North often acts out, and this is in a bid to try and bring the Western powers to the table for dialogue. And there are political pressures at home as well. But some experts do agree that Kim Jong-un's increased bluster cannot be ignored and that his regime has grown more and more dangerous. While most argue that war may still be unlikely, some fear that there could be a, a more limited attack that's on the cards. Close watchers of North Korea are used to Kim Jong-un and his nuclear threats, but some say that the latest messages from Pyongyang are of a different nature. Six days from his New Year's Eve declaration that it is fate accompli, that war can break out any time on the Korean peninsula, his military blasted artillery across the border. North Korea has also claimed the test of a new solid fuel missile and underwater attack drones since the beginning of this year. They follow from two years of missile launches virtually every month in blatant disregard of UN sanctions. However, it was his announcement of formally abandoning the goal of unification with the South that has set the cat amongst the pigeons. Reuniting with the South has always been a key part of North Korea's ideology since the inception of the state. This is a big deal. It fundamentally alters one of the regime's core ideological precepts. Kim Jong-un would now be tearing down the legacy on which his country was founded, along with shutting off all diplomatic channels and cross-border radio broadcasts. He's also announced that he's going to demolish the reunification arch. That's a nine-story monument on the outskirts of Pyongyang. The arch, which shows two women in traditional Korean dress reaching towards each other. It had been built in 2001 by his father to mark his efforts towards the goal of reunification. In fact, satellite pictures released by Planet Labs appear to show that the arch, the reunification arch, may already have been destroyed. But so far, there's been no official confirmation from North Korea regarding this. Kim Il-sung, the current Kim's grandfather, had been the one who went to war with the South in 1950. But he was also the one who set the idea that at some point, North Koreans would be united with the South. But his grandson has now chosen to define South Koreans as a different people altogether, perhaps to justify them as a military target. Dr. Carlin and Dr. Hecker, the analysts who had predicted war in the Korean Peninsula, have interpreted signs that Kim Jong-un has settled on actually pursuing the fight. But like I said before, most analysts disagree. Some of them are pointing out that the North is due to reopen itself to foreign tourists starting next month. And more importantly, it's also sold its own shells to Russia for its ongoing war effort in Ukraine. Now, if North was preparing for a war, this is something it could ill afford 
if it were actually thinking of attacking the South. But the ultimate deterrent is that the North, if they were to launch an attack, then the United States and the South Korean armies are just so much more advanced than the North Korean army. Instead, what Kim could be doing is building conditions for what many regard as small-scale action. This could even be in the form of shelling or attempted occupation of some of the contested islands. Remember, on the west of the Korean Peninsula, there are multiple contested islands between the North and the South. In fact, in 2010, the North struck the island of Yongpyeong, killing four South Korean soldiers, and that infuriated the South. A similar provocation could once again be done to try and test the limits of South Korea. It would also push the buttons of President Yoon suk Yeol, who is a hawkish leader. He has vowed in the past to respond disproportionately if North Korea were to attack the South. But these war fears, all of this war mongering, should be put in the context of how Kim has operated in the past. Looking at the history of North Korea, it's often used provocation to attract the attention of Western countries when it wants to negotiate. The regime also continues to suffer from economic sanctions. And remember, 2024 happens to be an election year for the countries that the North considers its enemies. Both the United States and South Korea will be going to polls. And that presents a good opportunity for Kim Jong-un to provoke. The current U.S. administration under President Joe Biden is tied up with the wars in Ukraine and in Gaza. It has not paid much attention to North Korea. Pyongyang has also typically engaged much more with Republican administrations. In fact, Kim Jong-un and Donald Trump famously had a bromance in 2019 before the denuclearization talks soured. Kim may be waiting for the former U.S. president to return to the White House. He's betting that Trump might weaken the alliance with South Korea and he might be open to dialogue with the North again. North Korea's close friendship with Russia and its continued economic support from China in this past year may also have boosted its recklessness and its audacity. It's received technical help from Russia to achieve a long-term goal of launching spy satellites. Kim even visited Russia last year. Others say that Kim Jong-un's behavior is aimed at stabilizing his own regime. This appears to be an ideological adjustment for regime survival. North Koreans are increasingly aware of their communist country's failings, particularly compared to South Korea. So a policy that's focused on defining the enemy is intended to justify Kim's missile spending during what is a difficult time. Presenting the South as an enemy would also make it easier to resolve the cognitive dissonance which is right at the heart of how the North views the South. The BBC, in fact, last week had published very rare footage showing two North Korean teenagers who were sentenced to 12 years of hard labor for watching K-dramas. The consensus seems to be that Kim Jong-un does not want a war. That's a prospect in which he only has everything to lose and nothing to gain. His threats are instead aimed at cementing his new North-South policy, which is designed ultimately to shore up his own power at home. While it's important for South Korea, the United States and its allies to prepare for the worst case scenario, it's also worth examining thoroughly what is the internal situation in North Korea. Because at the end of the day, the best way to find out what the leader of North Korea is thinking is to engage with him. But so far, there are no moves in that direction, either from South or from the United States. <laughs>